If you're struggling with having enough energy to get it all done, you're juggling work and family, household stuff and friends, and you're just exhausted, I have some good news for you. There is something you can do to get more energy, and it doesn't involve taking a pill or potion or anything, even consuming massive amounts of caffeine. In fact, I'd go so far to say this one change has made all the difference in my life, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and it can do the same for you. Welcome to The Next Simple Step. I'm Paul Goldsmith. I'm not here to sell you anything, only to tell you what could potentially change nearly every aspect of your life for the better. Are you ready? It's a daily discipline of exercise. Okay, please don't stop listening now. I'm not going to guilt you into anything. If you already exercise, good job. In a minute, I'll share a few resources that help you level up wherever you are now to where you want to go. If you don't have an exercise routine, you're not alone. Over 75% of the population doesn't get enough exercise, according to the CDC. And I was among that majority until 2020. Unfortunately, it took a pandemic to get my attention. In particular, when the news kept referring to the high risk of death for people with comorbidities, I had to look that word up. It was new for me. It just means multiple diseases. It makes sense. The more diseases somebody has, the higher risk of death or other unpleasantness. But for somebody that doesn't have some kind of scary disease at the moment, you're in relatively good health. You're good, right? Well, no, actually, because if you don't have enough energy and you want to get more done, then counterintuitively, if you want to have more energy, you have to expend some energy in exercise, building your capacity. If you just hate the idea of exercise, don't use that word. Think of it as a gym class or play, a time to invest in yourself. Just get curious about how it is you can get started and find something you actually like to do. And we'll look forward to keep doing day after day that you can make a habit, a lifestyle change for life, not just for a short season. Most every gym has a free trial of some sort, so you could try every single one of them, whether it's rowing or spinning or CrossFit. My wife and I are franchise owners of a burn boot camp and People of all ages and fitness levels come there. You're welcome to try that out for seven days for free. If you don't have the money right now to join a premium gym, there are low-cost local gyms, the YMCA, for example. And you can also just find local groups doing just about everything from walking or running or lifting. And if you're looking for information, just stop by a running shoe store, sporting goods store, whatever the case may be. Pick up a flyer, ask the employees. You can also find people in your community on a local Facebook group. Most towns have a local run club or lifting club. Here's the bottom line. Don't let your lack of energy or momentum or fear of being judged stop you. Your life matters and getting an exercise routine will improve the quality of your life almost instantly. Every gym I've been to in the past few years, and there's been a number, have been incredibly welcoming to people. Everyone has a day one, and the people in that gym had a day one, and they want to encourage new people. Everyone knows how challenging it is to overcome the inertia of not working out, of being out of shape. Today can be your day one. Maybe the next simple step for you is to get curious. What might be fun? What could you try? What can you schedule an appointment for tomorrow to try? What action can you take right now to start that pinwheel? that you can really start a better habit. Here's the thing. Exercise gets a bad rap is something you do when you have a massive problem, like you want to lose a bunch of weight or you get a health scare from the doctor. And then it's like, well, is it too late? Well, it's never too late as long as you have air in your lungs and you're able to move. Exercise can help you where you're at today. And it's not just the greatest proactive health measure you can take, but it's also lifespan extending and the older you get, the slower you become, and life gets more physically and mentally challenging. You can stave that off. You can get more vibrant and stay vibrant longer with exercise. It's the primary life hack to slow aging and improve your mental and physical and emotional health. 
You don't have to take my word for it. I highly recommend you check out this book from Dr. Peter Atia. It's called Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity. And in it, he writes, the data are unambiguous. Exercise not only delays actual death, but it also prevents cognitive and physical decline better than any intervention. Now, the cognitive decline really got my attention because my mom had dementia in her early 60s, and it was devastating to witness. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I certainly don't want to develop that. If there's anything I can do to stop it or at least slow something that is mind-destroying, that is life-destroying, if you can protect your brain and there's a ton of evidence you can with exercise, why wouldn't you? In Outlive, Dr. Atia also coined a term that has really stuck with me. He calls our last 10 years of life the marginal decade, and most people have no clue the day you enter it. Maybe you're in it now and you just don't know. Regardless, the marginal decade is critically important to think about because it's, for most people, the lowest quality of life and physical health significantly declines in your last 10 years. A lot of people just check out. They're miserable for the last 10 years of their life. And the earlier you get a jump start on your wellness and your fitness, the better quality you can have in your marginal decade. You don't have to wait for that marginal decade to enjoy the benefits. The benefits start immediately because it does give you more energy. When you start your day with exercise, it gives you more confidence and the ability to tackle whatever the day has before you. If you don't know where to start when it comes to exercise, it doesn't take much. Dr. Atia actually says going from zero weekly exercise to just 90 minutes per week can reduce your risk of dying from all causes by 14%. A little bit goes a long way. And for everyone at any fitness level, there's another incredible book that I'd highly recommend you check out called Built to Move, The 10 Essential Habits to Help You Move Freely and Live Fully. It's a field manual for staying functional at any fitness and age level. They have in the book 10 tests you can take to assess where you are and how to improve your body's movements. So no matter where you're at, you can improve along the spectrum and take that next simple step for yourself. And there's an age old question, you know, which is better lifting or cardio like running or jogging? And the answer is both. There was actually a great little article in uh, GQ recently. I'll put the link to it in the show notes. The headline was runners should lift and lifters should run. When it comes to overall health, it seems combining cardio and resistance training is better than focusing on one or the other. Combined aerobic and muscle strengthening physical activity provides superior and more complete health benefits than either activity alone. Alan Hutchinson, journalist and author, he wrote a book 12 years ago titled, Which Comes First, Cardio or Weights? And then he followed up last week, declaring it's time to stop picking sides in this debate. You should do both. Each activity has its own suite of benefits. Cardio is superior in improving heart health, circulation, and cholesterol, while lifting weights is more impactful on basal metabolism and blood sugar control. Put plainly, he says, the only wrong answer in this debate is picking sides in the first place. No matter where you are in your fitness, you can improve it as long as you're still able to move. So take the next simple step. You owe it to yourself, your family. And I'll add one additional benefit is you're modeling healthy living for your kids because they're watching. Little kids love to be active. I've learned, though, (laughs) my son at 15 not a little kid anymore, doesn't always appreciate exercising, but when I nudge him along and he does it, you can immediately see the benefits it has on his mood and his confidence. So find your reason to invest in yourself for your family and keep going. Maybe you want to play with your grandkids or live a long enough life to enjoy your favorite activities with your loved ones after you retire in your marginal decade. If you don't know how to get started or you just want a little positive reinforcement, text me the number 
559-574-3210. And I promise, no guilt, no high pressure. Let's find what works for you to have the best quality of life so you can have more of it and the energy to live your life to the fullest. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you hear my heart in this. And I'll talk to you next time on the next Simple Step Podcast.